Hello everyone, I'm Paul and uh, today basically I'm going to start getting the roof done, a uh, well overdue project. Now one thing for sure is that uh, when you have something set up, you plan something and then you set it up and then you change your mind, well you pay a little bit of a price for that and I'll talk a little bit about that as I go through this process. So you can see here I got a bunch of lumber and the lumber is to sheet the roof and it's all one inch and the widths of the boards are different widths. I've cut the boards and I've assembled it here to take one piece or three pieces at a time and to install it up on the top. So let's go up top and take a look at what we're going to be doing. All right guys up here on the top you can basically see the roof was set up for metal roofing and uh, I changed my mind and that's given me a lot of headaches. So just to get started basically because I am doing metal or uh, shingles now I didn't want to take all the strapping that I've got here off uh, I don't like to undo something so much so I'm going to work around it and because I'm working around it it's caused me a lot of problems or it's going to cause me some issues and the first issue that it's going to cause me is that when I go to put my boards is that I have to cut a board at full length in order to get it to fit in here Otherwise, I would have been able to start from here and just go straight up. So anyways, I'll bring some boards up and we'll get started. You can see here guys basically what I've got is everything set up in a way that uh, this piece goes with that piece and the next one uh, has the piece underneath it you can see here and the same thing on the top these three go together so I have all my wood organized so when I bring it up there I'm just going to have the full span everything's been pre-cut as far as the length goes but as far as going the width wise as I mentioned earlier I've got those uh, one by fours up there and I'm not taking them out so it's going to give me a little bit of an issue well what I'll have to do is for each section I'll have to take one of these pieces and I'll have to cut straight down lengthwise to fit it in now the reason why I don't do it ahead of time is because there could be a bow in the wood and if I measure based the distance between uh, each piece the width and then the difference between the two which are two uh, two foot uh, two foot spacing up there if there's a bow in the wood then if I take a piece of wood and I measured it accordingly from the ends and then I go to put it in as bowed in the center well that board's not going to fit so basically I'll get the wood up there and then cut after it's a little bit of a pain but that's what happens when you change your mind okay guys I've got some boards up you can see I put a few up here uh, just to get started to show you what I'm going to do um, as I mentioned I have the boards measured out to go across at the uh, the width of it uh, or the length rather but to go the width going up because of these guys here I'm going to have to cut slices after so the idea is basically when I get my piece of wood up uh, I've got different lengths for different boards up here instead of going down to the end and putting the end nice and flush it's better off that I come here and that I center my board here because if my board if your buildings kind of a little bit out of square and you put the board flush down there what may happen is that you don't get a nice um, get this board nicely in the center to nail it down so I want to make sure that I'm pretty much in the center so that when I put the next board going across that way that I've got a lot of material here to uh, nail my board into so that's basically a two a two by uh, two by eight so basically if I wanted to do I can get really technical on that and just put the measuring tape here and I can just quickly adjust it to be one inch or I could put a line if you want you can take a pencil and make a, a line here or a mark at the one inch and that's basically where I would want to put my uh, my line up my board so that I'm right in the middle of the board so I did it this way now this is just going to slow you down once you get a lot of experience doing this you don't need to you just do it by eye but you can see hopefully you can see the orange mark there that's in the middle 
So now all I have to do is for keeping my boards nice and centered on my beam so I have a lot of nailing surface is just line it up like that. I'm good in there. And I just have to make sure that oh, I don't want a great big nail. I just want a average size nail here. So what I'll make sure is that my boards make the contact here. It doesn't have to be really snug and tight because wood moves a lot. And I just pound a nail in. That'll hold it in place. And then now I can just take my next board and it will fit nice and perfectly in here. Now these boards here have a little bit of a different thickness and stuff like this. This stuff is, um, as I mentioned, I'm gonna explain a few things as I go through all this here. Um, why you don't change your mind between going from a metal roof to a shingle roof. Um, and this is one of the things here. There's just a little bit of a lip here. Um, and part of that reasoning is because this wood was milled at different times and um, that's never a good idea because what this mill uh, this wood was never meant to be used in this application here so this is wood that i had salvaged out of my wood piles and based on that that's why i've got all kinds of different widths and stuff like that so i'll explain a little bit more in a little bit so i'm just going to tack this in here as well Put two nails here. And I'm gonna add the second nail on this other board here to make sure that it stays in place. Now, since I made sure that my center line is here and that if there's any uh, overhang that I don't like, I can always just cut it with the skill saw later on, just go make a strip straight up. So basically I've measured everything, but if, because if there's a little bit out of square or whatever, if I want to square it up, there'll be a little bit of unevenness on the ends, which is very easy to go with a chalk line later or just snap a chalk line and just make your cut straight up along the line. But hopefully I don't have any issues with that. So now you can see here, the boards are gonna be pretty tight in here. I have a lot of different dimensions. You can see that there's a bit of a gap. That one's too thin. So this is what I was talking about. The price you pay for changing your mind. And this one here. Oh, you know, look at that. I'm going to be lucky I can snug that one in. Now the lengths of the boards. Again, because I never had planned to do this method. And the boards that I had on hand. Um, I didn't want to mill new stuff full length when I have a whole pile of boards that I can use for this application. The only difference is now I have to do short pieces and long pieces and all kinds of different lengths and stuff. So again, the same idea here is that I'm not going to go down and look at the end. I'm going to get my board here in the center. I'm going to make sure that it's about one inch on there. I should be able to get this guy in there. So. I've got it in there nicely right now, so I got one inch. So I'm just going to tack this board down. Give it a second nail. Now the reason why I'm tacking these down and not putting nails everywhere is because I'm not going to bother filming me pounding on nails in every section here. and. The idea is for me to get enough surface here so I can get up on the roof and be on this part here and then I can work my way up. So the second board that I had for that is this one here. So I can put this one all the way down. So I got something in the way here, this board here. This guy's in the way. Okay, I'm gonna go up there and uh, get this one in. I gotta see them white. Oh, I got a little bit of piece there sticking up. Again, I'm gonna show you another another issue that basically because I changed my mind. What's happening right here right now is that 
you can see this little piece here that's sticking up coming underneath now because i'm putting a board in here now it's going to it interferes and it's not allowing me to put the board down in there now when i was going to put the metal roofing you can see the metal roofing would sit on this piece and then it would sit on the one here on the bottom so it would cut it over so there was no reason to cut this here um again this is another issue from changing your mind so i don't know how many times i'm going to tell you that but uh and the reason i'm telling you that because i've got to get it off my chest so because i don't like that i changed my mind but uh I have a good reason for it um, I just prefer shingles over the metal roofing when I expand the next section I I still may go to a metal roof or I may do shingling I'm not really sure yet um, we'll see how it as it goes so anyways guys I gotta go and get something to cut that and I'll be back all right guys I got the uh, chainsaw this is a, uh, a must on the construction site uh, going back many many years anyways you always have a chainsaw on the work site so i'm just going to cut that snip that little piece off enough to um the nice thing nowadays is that uh, the electric ones are a little easier than the gas ones so i'm just going to snip this off and let you come in on a different angle here i'm just going to move out of the way of the camera so you can see basically what i'm going to do here there we go that's all I needed to do just cut that out of the way so that I can get my board down inside put the chainsaw down got a little wasp here I just gotta wait till he goes away there we go now I think this bow or this board has a bow in it because it's a little bit more difficult to put in than it should be definitely bowing somewhere let's take a look all right there you go guys look at that you can see all that space on there this is what I was talking about earlier is that why you can't just necessarily measure the distance that you're going to need between the the gaps of the wood that I have here already strapped up again it's because of that issue as I mentioned there's a bow there that piece of wood is going to have to work pretty hard to get in there or I'm going to have to go and cut it to uh, lengthwise just so that I have a sliver, take a sliver off so that I can slip it in there. So I'm going to try the hard way first. See if I can get it in. I don't like the idea of having the wood so tight that it's, um, because it, like I say, it moves all the time. No, nope, that's too much, too much force on it. So I'm just going to leave that piece of wood. Um, this one I'm going to mark, just put this aside here and I'm going to run this down on the uh, sawmill. It's going to take a, a little you know, sliver off and it will slip right in there. So this is a problem again, I'm going to mention it a lot in this video guys. So just drill this into my head to not change my mind once I've done something once. Um, it's never a good thing. So like I said, I could have stripped everything off. And started it right from scratch, but I don't I don't want to undo everything that I've done. Anyways guys, so again I'll be back in a second. Alright guys, I trimmed that board on the sawmill. You can do it with a skill saw or a table saw and some and so on. Uh, what I had done is the board was bowed. I'll show you here. The board was bowed like this, kind of if you think of it this way, and it was bowed this way. So what I did is I cut with the bow facing upwards. So what I'm doing is I'm flattening as I cut like this. So that's what I ended up doing. And you can see here now basically how much flatter that board is than it was before. And if you flip it the other way, it's nice and flat on that side. So you can see there a little bit of a, there's still a little bit in there, but that board should fit in there now, now without any problem. You don't want to have the board in there so tight because don't forget wood moves, swells, twists, buckles, and all kinds of other funny things. So if we just slide this up. And, and it's uh, 
it's still a little bit tight, uh, but it's not too bad. But you can see now my board is in there nicely, uh, no problems. Everything's going to move, so now I just have to pound a couple nails in and then uh, continue the process going all the way up. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm just going to work away at this. Uh, when I come to something new, I'll come back and I'll show you. Uh, this way you're not just going to watch me do repetitively the same thing over and over and over, just pounding nails and putting boards down. So once I get to the next little issue, I'll let you guys know. All right, guys, I got the, uh, the first section done. Uh, I didn't have any more issues. Uh, just want to elaborate a little bit on the story about, uh, again, bring it up. Uh, I shouldn't have changed my mind when, you know, you've got something all set in stone, basically, and you change your mind and the difficulties that it brings. Well, anyways, when I went to source the wood, I had uh, a few options. One, I was thinking of putting plywood originally instead of using my, my lumber. But the plywood I obviously would have to purchase, so I thought it would be better to go out and source some used, uh, used plywood. But every time I would find some used plywood, it was already sold, and uh, I just said, oh, heck with that. I said to myself, why spend money that I don't need to spend? I've got tons of wood here. Um, so anyways, I decided to go with the my own lumber. Now the issue here is that the lumber that I had I, they're all kind of off cuts from many times that I've milled and the dimensions of the wood were just stored away uh, for future use for d different projects, small little things to do and stuff like that. But not for something like this. So anyways, the unfortunate thing is that all the wood that I use here and to do the second part of the roof, every wood source that I have, I've got wood sources in different locations stored away and every place that I have it, it's all at the very bottom of the pile. So all the piles that I went into, I have to unstack them, get what I wanted out of it, and then restack it. Now I did have some longer boards, um, long enough to span right across, but those boards are too valuable to cut up into sections or to use for something, or not cut up in section, but rather to use for something like this. Uh, nice long lumber is uh, more valuable to me for other things. So that's why I've grabbed all the smaller pieces and I cut them to length and I just kind of married them up uh, different sizes. Sometimes it was three pieces, sometimes it was two, sometimes it was a long one, sometimes it was a short one. And as you can notice here, there's like all kinds of widths that I've had. So I really created myself a good headache, but uh, on the long run, guys, uh, this is not a serious headache or anything like that. All this may meant for me is a little bit more work, but heck, I've got all the time in the world to do this. so. Uh, Mind you, I do have a lot of other things on the go, but uh, I enjoy doing this, so it's not a big deal. Now, just before, uh, I want to show you a couple of things. I'm not going to show you uh, me doing the boarding on the next section, um, and I don't think I'm going to show you me doing the shingling. Uh, there's too many videos out there of people doing shingling and stuff like that. It's uh, a very, very simple thing to do. It's this here roof, I'll shingle this in, the, in an afternoon or so. All right, guys, I'm just going to show you here on the top. You can see the uh, all the boarding is done. A uh, couple of things is you can see here, I've offset you, the um, the seams, all the seams except for this one here at the top. Unfortunately, I was not able to avoid that, but you can see I staggered it here and staggered it down there and throughout the whole process. So I've staggered them all over the place. So that's an important thing. The other thing I want to show you is what I had mentioned earlier is that when I line these seams up. I do the seam here first where the boards meet so that I make sure that I'm in the center of the beam that's underneath it so, or the rafter that's underneath it. So anyways, when they come down here, this is what can happen and this is perfectly fine and this is a very easy thing to adjust. So you basically end up with a staggered uh, end here. So all I have to do is now put my chalk line and then run my skill saw down through the end and then it just cut it all up nice and square. So very simple. So anyways, the next section here, you can see there, there's the loft I did on the last, last video. Um, it's going to go much quicker because I can stand on the loft. I can do about 90% of the job on the loft. The, and I don't have to go up and down as much to get the wood. Um, because I'm just going to load all the wood on the loft. It'll be much closer to me. So, But other than that, guys, um, it uh, really turned out to be uh, pretty good. All right, guys, this brings us to the end of the video. I just want to say a big thank you to all my subscribers. I really appreciate that. Also, to the guys that leave 
guys and girls that leave the uh, comments on a regular basis. I also really appreciate that. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you have not subscribed to my channel, you can do so by hitting that subscription button down below. That'll really help my channel out. Once again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Gelling Outdoors. Thank you.